all right, whenever we do any of these transforms, which we'll do a lot of, we'll do Fourier and discrete Fourier, and, and as you remember, we did Laplace and things, we always have a section on the properties. And so, in this case, we'll only go over a couple properties of the Z transform. Z transform. And I've mentioned here, you, you should read this section because I'm only going to do a few of them. Um, and, and the rest of them are in a table in the book and, and be familiar with them. Um, all right, so what are they? Well, of course, linearity. If, if I have the sum of two or more different time functions and I want to take the Z transform, I can just take the scaled Z transforms and add them together. Um, so that's a big one. Time shift is a big one. If I ever have a delay of K samples in the Z domain, that multiplies the original X of Z by Z to the minus K. So minus K there shows up as a Z to the minus K there. And you'll see the utility in this. This is really kind of nice. Um, for example, suppose I want to find the Z transform of a simple, uh, simple signal. And it's a 1, 3, 0, minus 4. 1 is at the uh, n equals 0 point. I can write this out as, in, in a functional form, as delta function. That's delta of n. This is 3 delta of n minus 1. So this is a, a delta that's shifted to the right by 1. And that 4, that minus 4 is, shift, is a delta function shifted to the right by 3 time samples. This is n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So we've done all that stuff before. Well, we take the Z transform of X, and so um, we can now use this property to find the Z transform rather than plugging this into the uh, to the basic definition of Z transforms with that infinite sum of um, X to the N, Z to the minus N. And now we're just going to do it using this property. Well, what's the Z transform of delta N? That's the first one we figured out in class. That was our first derivation. The Z transform of delta N is just 1. Well, what's the Z transform of this thing? We now know how to deal with it. Um, it's 3 because it's linear times the Z transform of a delta, um, which is 1. And then we have to take into account that there's a time shift of 1. And that's this Z to the minus 1. Time shift is 1. Okay, let's do another example. So what's the Z transform of this? Well, we get a minus 4 because we can bring a minus 4 outside. Um, Z transform of delta, again, is a 1. And we have to multiply it by Z to the minus 3 because we need to account for this time shift. And then we add them all together, again, because of linearity. So X of Z, Z transform of that is 1, plus 3Z to the minus 1, minus 4Z to the minus 3. If I, if I write down the original function, I'm just being a little redundant here. I'm just going to write this function. I'm going to write it here underneath x of z. I think you can see that there's kind of a nice, easy correspondence that, that um, for any term, 3, um, 3 times delta just becomes 3 times z. But a delta function just turns into z to the minus k, okay, here k is 1, here k is 1, delta of n minus 3 becomes z to the minus 3. We can almost do z transforms by inspection as long as they're of this form, just a list of numbers. Okay, so we can just do this just by looking at it. z transform of this is going to be 1 plus 3z to the minus 1 plus 0z to the minus um, 2 minus 4z to the minus 3. Okay, so that's, we're going to use that a lot. It's just such a simple, easy thing. Who would have ever thought that Z transforms would be easy? Well, the next thing is convolution. Convolution is invented to make life uh, hard for us. But in this case, um, when we take the Z transform of a convolution in the Z domain, it becomes a product. Um, so we get x of n convolved with h of n becomes x of z times h of z, x of z times h of z. Let's do an example. So here I've got 1, 3, 0, minus 4, under 
lines b and n equals 0, convolved with 1 and minus 1. By inspection, the z transform is, is given by 1 plus 3z to the minus 1 minus 4z to the minus 3. That's the one we just did. z transform of this is 1 minus z to the minus 1. I just have to multiply these polynomials. I don't have to do the table method or the graphical convolution method. I just multiply polynomials. Here, I'm trying to multiply these polynomials. I've got 1 times this whole thing, which is shown there, minus z to the minus 1 times this whole thing, which is shown there. Okay, look at it for a second. Make sure you believe it. I'm just multiplying these polynomials combine like terms, and I claim this is the product of those two polynomials from just simple, you know, uh, junior high school math. Well, now I can take the inverse Z transform by inspection, okay? Because 1 transforms into a 1 at the origin. 2Z to the minus 1 is a 2. It occurs at N equals 1 because of that. Okay, there's the N equals 1 term. Minus 3z to the minus 2 is a minus 3 that occurs at the time step n equals n equals 2. And we got minus 4z to the minus 3 shows up there. 4z to the minus 4 shows up there. So the exponent tells us the time location. n equals 4 corresponds to that number, no, not including the minus sign. So that's a nice way to do, um, a simple way to do convolution. What I want to point out now is that you should start using MATLAB, and I'm, I'll probably give some homeworks to do this in the near future, probably not this time around. But in MATLAB, it's very easy to convolve things. We can convolve those two sequences using the CONV command, and we just we put 1, 3, 0, minus 4, into brackets that makes it a vector. MATLAB always assumes the first value is the n equals 0 value and then it's going to convolve two vectors. The second vector is 1 and minus 1 and, um, and we should get the answer that we want. Let me um, see if I can pop up MATLAB and um, I'm going to type in, oops, I'm going to type in, there it is. Type in those values. So I want to have um, y equals conv, um, and the two vectors are, are 1, 3, 0, minus 4. And the second one is 1, minus 1, and you see that it gives the answer, which is 1, 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 4. So um, directly, we can get the answer using MATLAB. I want to point out one more thing, that convolution is the same as multiplying polynomials. You know, if you ever have any polynomials you want to multiply, just use the convolution command.